Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. Well, it's our weekly viewer question and answer time. So remember, if you've got a question, leave a comment below. So let's get started. Kathleen wanted to know how do I come up with my project ideas and where do I buy my fabric? Well, my project ideas, a lot of them come from you, the viewer, through your suggestions. Also, it comes from people I know, friends of mine that sew. I also, as I'm going out and just shopping in everyday life, I'll see something that just triggers an idea in my head. Now, as far as fabric, I love shopping at Joann Fabrics and Crafts because I only have to drive, oh, 30 some miles to get there. Uh, it's not right around the corner, but it is a great place for me to shop. And also make sure if you are shopping there, you sign up for their coupon app. I have it on my phone. I go in, I do my shopping. As I'm checking out, I just have them scan all kinds of coupons. And you can save as much as 50% or even more on some clearance items. My panel fabric, I usually will get a lot of it from eQuilter.com or Fabric.com. Other places I love to shop are quilt fabric stores. They absolutely have gorgeous, high quality fabrics. And I've done quite a few videos on my shopping experiences in these quilt fabric stores. So if you wanna check out those videos, uh, look down there in the About section and I will have the links to my shopping experiences. And also, coming up fairly soon, we're gonna have another shopping experience to share with all of you. CM had a fantastic question because I often don't share with you too much what goes on behind the camera when I'm making videos. She wanted to know what was my easiest video to shoot and which was the most difficult. Well, let me tell you, none of them were easy. Back in my days when I was doing all of the video camera work myself, I made a ton of mistakes. For instance, not turning the microphone on, filming half the video without any sound, or not charging the microphone, not charging the camera, leaving out steps, or sewing steps incorrectly, didn't have enough fabric to finish it. The list goes on and on and on. So no video is easy. But let me show you a few little outtakes of some of my videos. To you, and I hopeful, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> so hopeful, why can't right I there. say? Yeah. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I also hope it was also helpful to all of you. <laughs> I also hope it was helpful. We need to print it on the wall, right? Okay. Scott. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> okay. Serious face. And I hope it was helpful to all of you out there as well. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and I hope it was helpful to all of you out there as well. Emily likes to make plush toys using fur fabric and she was concerned that if she used the fur fabric that it might clog up her bobbin case. So let's take a look at a bobbin case and I'll show you how to clean it out. One of the things you need to remember when you have a sewing machine is that you need to keep it properly maintained. You need to take the time to clean it yourself and also take it to a repair person for at least a yearly cleaning and if you stitch and sew a lot, maybe even twice a year. So here's my bobbin case right here. So take the lid off and in here is my bobbin that I'm pulling out. And by the way, this is my Viking sewing machine. And I can see in here, I haven't cleaned mine in a while. So it's pretty dirty, but I also need to take the throat plate off. So for mine, I just take the screwdriver that came with my machine and I just 
pop it off like this and set it aside. And also, other parts of it come out. This comes out and this comes out. Now, every machine is set up differently, so always refer to your user's manual. And I don't know if I can hold this very well so you can see, but there is all kinds of dust in here. And I don't sew with fur fabric. All of your fabrics shed lint, so it's going to get dirty. So at the end of the day, every time you sew, you need to clean it off. All machines come with this little brush and you just clean it off. Now, another area to clean is way down in here and it's filthy and I'm a little embarrassed to show you this because I should be cleaning mine more often. But look at all this dust and I don't sew with fur so you can see how dirty it is. So you want to take the time to clean it all out. Some machines require a little bit of oil to go down inside your bobbin case. Always again refer to your user's manual. Another area I like to dust out because occasionally it gets clogged with lint from the thread. And this piece right here, now not all machines have the ability to pull this off for you, but mine comes off and I can go in there and dust a lot of this off because usually right down in here it collects a lot of lint and then the machine can jam. Again, check your user's manual for suggestions on how to clean it yourself and make sure you take it to a repair person to have them check it out on a yearly basis. Kelly has experienced a problem that I've also experienced myself. You're sewing, you're just starting to sew your fabric seam and suddenly the needle pushes the fabric down through your throat plate. It jams and you've ruined your fabric. So let's take a look at a couple of throat plates and I'll show you what a simple solution is. My sewing machine has two different throat plates. So if you've purchased a sewing machine that says it's a quilting machine, you probably have two different throat plates. If you don't, you still need to make sure how you align your fabric up when you're starting to sew. But let's take a look at this throat plate here. It's got a really wide opening. This throat plate is used for when you're doing decorative stitching where the needle goes back and forth, especially if you're doing a zigzag sewing machine. If, let's say you're doing just a straight line of stitching all the time using thin uh, thread and if your needle is dull and you just start sewing, it could push the fabric right down in there and it's stuck. So if you're doing, let's say you're making a lot of quilts, you don't want to use this throat plate. So let's take a look at another throat plate I have. On this throat plate, it has a tiny little hole. And this is great if you do a lot of quilting. So when you first start to stitch, you're not as likely to jam the machine because the fabric can't go down in there because the hole is too small. Also, make sure you're using a fresh needle every time you start a new project because that also could cause your fabric to jam. If you're not lucky enough to have two different throat plates and all you have is the one with the wide mouth, here is a suggestion. Don't start stitching right at the edge here. Come in just a little bit and I have found that that helps to prevent the fabric from jamming. So just place it a little ways past the needle and then begin stitching. Kathy had an excellent question on needles and what fabrics go with what type of needle. What do the numbers represent? It's so confusing. The problem with needles 
and even thread is that every manufacturer has their own suggestions of what fabrics, needles, threads work well together. So we're going to look at a needle chart. This is the brand of needles that I happen to use. I'm not saying this is what you have to use, but this is what I'm using right now. What I did to find out what needle works with what fabric is I actually went to this website and printed out the needle chart that they have. So as far as the bands here, there's two different bands. The top band represents the needle type and the bottom band represents the needle size. So you have to make sure that if you're stitching on stretch fabric, you pick a needle that has this color of band. Or if you're stitching on quilting fabric, you would stitch this, uh, use a needle with this color of band. And also the numbers here. The best bet that you can do if you're never sure what needle to use is a 9014 needle. This works with most fabrics, not all. The problem is that the industry, the needle and thread industry, does not have a standard. Each company does their own thing. So all of these numbers might mean something different with a different needle manufacturer. So look at the name on your package of needles, go to that website and check it out to see if they have a needle chart in there. If they're not giving you any information, I suggest you change to a different brand of needle. And again, when in doubt, use a number 9014. Those were some great questions, so keep those questions coming. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Sewing Room channel, and also check out my Facebook page. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing!